For Criminal Media's Policy, this is Sane Lamini. Joining me today is political analyst, Professor Raymond Satna, to discuss his column titled, Freedom and Xenophobia Do Not Belong Together. Freedom Must Be Defended and Xenophobia Banished. Welcome, Professor. Thanks very much. Mm. So in your column, uh, Professor, you relate to xenophobia and a limited aspect of the question, the revocation of the Zimbabwean exemption permit. Is it not excessive uh, to see this as undermining freedom in general? I don't think it's excessive because uh, in the constitution, it says South Africa belongs to all who live in it. It doesn't say all citizens, it says all who live in it. Mm. And freedom is a universal quality. It doesn't say citizens are free. It doesn't say South Africans alone are free. It says all freedom is, they say, indivisible. It can't be divided and some people cast off. So what I think we are doing not only defying the concept of freedom in general and the concept in our constitution, but we are spitting on pan-Africanism. The ANC from before it was formed, Pixi Kai Saka Seme in Columbia, New York, uh, spoke about the mission that the African people in South Africa had in regard to unifying the continent. And until very recently, we believed that the borders were artificial. The borders were made by colonialism. And it's not correct that these people are taking away jobs. They're flooding our country. There's lots of statistics by the Wits uh, Migration Institute, which shows this is not true. And it's very unfortunate that this xenophobia is spreading amongst ordinary people and I hope that they will uh, stand together with their brothers and sisters who are vulnerable, who are, are really scratching out a living uh, at a lower level in most cases than most of them. So I do believe that the connection with freedom is valid. Mm. You also mentioned the concept of a common society referred to by Chief Albert Lutuli, as well as the concept of relationality. What do these concepts mean and what is their relevance uh, to South Africa today? Yes, you know, I'm, I'm a scholar, you know, so I throw in these words. Um, the thing with the concept of a common society it was used by Chief Albert Lutuli, and later, when I was a student, it was used by Professor Jack Simons, a very famous scholar who uh, was kicked out of UCT by the apartheid regime in 1965, went to live in Zambia, and then in his 70s or 80s was teaching in the MK camps. So he, he was a really um, committed person. Now, uh, he Literally first, but then Jack Simons also built up this concept of a common society, meaning we are already together in many ways. Mm. Under apartheid, he said, we already share a whole lot of things. And this applies, by the way, also to foreign migrants. Our mining industry would not have been built without people from the surrounding states. And he said, he used to say, we are already a common society, but we are not equally part of that common society. Mm. And the common society concept, I think, is useful in trying to suggest why we should share the concerns of everyone. The, the notion of interrelationality is connected because it doesn't see the individuals in South Africa as separate human beings, that I must get my PhD. I must make 100,000 from this contract. It's also a concept where you understand you live with other people and you concern yourself. You see someone who is not well. It's your concern. And that's what Ubuntu is about. You know, at one stage, I didn't want to throw around the word Ubuntu because you found 
everyone was taking on the word Ubuntu, like Ubuntu armed response, Ubuntu financial services. But Ubuntu is a very good concept in referring to relationality, that we all share a common destiny in what we can make into a common society. So I believe the two are, the concept is connected to the one of common society, neither of which are used enough in South Africa. And lastly, Professor, you also refer to the use of, of the term uh, cockroaches uh, to refer to foreign migrants and its use in the Rwandan genocide. You also speak of ending violence against migrants and others requiring equality. Can you now elaborate on what you are getting at uh, and as well as how equality becomes relevant? Yes, well, the, the cockroaches part is obviously clear that once you start calling people uh, terms that refer to them as subhumans, it doesn't matter what you do to them. You are dehumanizing them. You are removing their human qualities by referring to them as cockroaches. And th this one might have expected under apartheid, but now this is happening from people in this country in a supposedly free South Africa. Now, Judith Butler writes a lot about nonviolence, and she says that nonviolence depends on equality, that you do not regard any lives as less valuable than others. Mm -hmm. So if I kill a human being, no life is ungrievable, she says. There will always be some people who value that person because they are a human being, and we should be uh, against the removal or the assault on any human being because we are also human beings and we are connected to one another. We are in, in a relationship with one another. So she criticizes individualistic notions attached to some conceptions of liberalism where it's all everyone for himself or herself and bugger the rest of them. And the, the notion of the Freedom Charter and the Constitution is one of caring about one another. In feminism, the feminist ethics, there's a notion of the ethic of care that you ask yourself, not what can I do for this person, but what does the person want what do they need? And you relate to them. So interrelationship and equality and nonviolence are all connected to our common humanity, which we must rebuild after 28 years where we first had some freedom and now it's being undermined. There was political analyst Professor Raymond Satna speaking to Krima Media's policy about freedom and xenophobia do not belong together. Freedom must be defended and xenophobia banished.